Welcome to Offwatch. One of the joys about doing this podcast has been talking to those people who were there at those dramatic moments and are able to recount the stories, as well as talking to those who are pushing our sport from the front. Well, my guest this week is a little bit of both. Ken Reid has been there and done that with three times in the ocean race as skipper, as well as helming in the America's Cup and numerous world title wins. But he's also somebody, as president of North Sales, who's helping teams find their performance edge and more often than not found in the commentary box covering some of the biggest regattas around the planet. He gave us an incredible interview leading up to the Ocean Race Europe about who he thinks is going to be performing well, as well as the state of our sport at the moment and what North Sales are doing during the last year. We hope you enjoy this interview. And of course, if you do, you can subscribe for many more. But in the meantime, enjoy. Ken Reed was our first guest on season one of Off Watch. So who better to help us round out season two, as well as giving us an update as to what our sport has been through this past year, and plus a little bit of an insight as to what North Sales has been doing with the Ocean Race Europe coming up in just a few weeks' time. Ken, uh, once again, thank you very much for fitting us into your busy schedule. Um, so let's start off with the fact that you know, I was looking at the diary and it was pretty much a year ago uh, that we were talking. And one of the first things I remember asking you in that very first episode that we did was obviously with the pandemic and what effect that was having with North Sales as well as just the sport in general. You have been a busy man. I mean, I'm sure North has been busy, but also you personally have been out there. We've seen you uh, on our screens with the America's Cups and things like that. Looking back at it now on, on the past year, um, how has it sort of rounded out? And do you sort of feel like you're on the kind of um, the back slide of it now? Well, it, it's to say it was a phenomenal year is doing a serious injustice to, injustice to phenomenal years. You know, it was it was terrifying. It was hard. Um, there, there were. There were lots of changes we had to make. There were friends that we worked with forever um, who don't work with us anymore. Um, there was reshuffling of the company. Uh, I think really kind of a reshuffling of our sport at the same time, and that's something that we couldn't predict. I, I think businesses had to do what they had to do to survive for a while. There's no question about it. I, we had never seen a radical downturn in orders like that before, uh, you know, a little over a year ago. Uh, with that said, things started slowly coming back and they started coming back in, in really crazy places. The, the, lo I think local sailing and local sailing communities went through this pandemic and shockingly enough, prospered. I had, I've told a bunch of people, I haven't had as much fun sailing around here, around Narragansett Bay in a long time. I haven't sailed in Narragansett Bay this much it, it, uh, that I did last summer in, in a long, long time. Uh, yacht clubs pressed forward when they could. They, they eliminated the social aspect of it, but people went sailing because they wanted to go sailing again. Um, you know, you, it really affected the professional side of the sport. Uh, but even professionals talked about how they, they went to their local yacht clubs and they were hanging out with people that they hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, friends became friends again. Um, you know, it, it was it was really it was crazy how bad things can lead to good sometimes. And I really think local sailing communities prospered and are, will continue to prosper. We're not out of this yet by any means. But here in the States, you know, I, I'm, I, I have my vaccine. You know, I've, I've got my two shots and I, most people I know have had their two shots. So the, the states have really pushed this hard. I know a lot of parts of Europe are still a little bit behind. Um, but it's going to come, and when it comes, uh, it's coming back with a bang. Uh, sales this year, S A L E S of S A I L S, uh, are actually quite good. They're almost back to 2019 standards, which is a massive improvement from from different times last year. Smaller boats are buying sales. Not a lot of big Grand Prix boats are buying sales because they still don't know when they're going to go sailing again. So, anyway, it's a long answer uh, to. I'm stunned that sailing has uh, not only found a way to survive, but to thrive in certain areas, in the fun areas. If people want to go sailing because it's fun. Let's, let's just start with brass tacks. It, 
it's an answer that absolutely confirms my sort of observation as well here in the UK, where people who would normally maybe turn their nose up at going and sailing, oh, well, that boat doesn't rate, and oh, that's just a, you know, come on, you would take anything, you know, and just as you say, it's that enjoyment of just getting out in the water again, you know, it, it sort of, it reminds me of a time when I was a late teenager and I broke my arm and I wasn't able to sail for a summer. Couldn't wait to get back out before. And it kind of reminds you what it is you love. Um, I wonder for you as an industry, has there been anything where you've had to do things differently, like everyone around the world, that you've gone, oh, we quite like doing it that way. We wouldn't have tried it, but but COVID kind of made us try it. And actually, you know, have has there been anything that you'll stick with? Well, the, the simple one that every company's facing right now, I'm still sitting in my house, you know, the, our, our office is wide open and I have a, I have my, my, um, my makeshift uh, guest bedroom slash office and my wife's downstairs in our other office. And I think, um, at least in the States right now, where a lot of people, I don't have kids at home anymore. So I don't have a reason to get the heck out of the house. <laughs> The, the uh, I think we're gonna we're, we're really grasp grappling with the the are we gonna make people go back to the office or are we gonna kind of let people find their happy place? A lot of our upper management is really really thinks that for example they're getting a lot more done at home and not have the distraction of the whole office. I still love going into the office and so I'm kind of splitting my time fifty fifty. But that's just that's just the basics. Um, listen, we, we've we've changed. Uh, we, we've we've reorganized it, um, manufacturing facilities. We've reorganized how salesmen um, get compensated in several of the company in several of the countries. Um, we, we're, we're we're certainly that's a that's a rookie move, by the way. We're certainly <laughs> um, we're certainly uh, taking the approach that the rules are kind of off and let's just keep finding ways to get better. So those are just two kind of basic ones. Um, I, 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 I like, I like where we are because, you know, my old theory of let's try it. If it doesn't work, well, let's try something else. Well, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of working. It's kind of working that way. And it's nice. It's a nice breath of fresh air. There will be an interesting moment where I, you know, I imagine that everybody that works for North as well as pretty much any company that is involved in sailing loves sailing loves being out of the water or at least enjoys that kind of you know waterside life um i can't imagine much better than being free to do a day's work while sitting at the yacht club with a good wi-fi connection maybe we're not quite there yet but that does sound quite good um let me ask you about your time with the America's Cup, because it, for me anyway, it was really fascinating with everything that, you know, with all of us that weren't able to get out on the water, you're just hunkering for some amazing sailing. And then we got it. We got something on our screens that was just absolutely fantastic. Um, you were down there on the commentary side. Uh, obviously, it would, would have been a very different involvement from what you've done before. You know, you're not able to just sort of wander around as, as you would like to freely. But I'm imagining that it was it was a good seat. You know, you were front row. I imagine, you know, with all the sailing that's been cancelled, that was a good one to be involved with. Oh, there's no question. And and just how good a job New Zealand did at, at really kind of keeping the disease out, that, that event doesn't happen anything close to like that in any other country in the world, frankly. It, it, it just kind of lucked out. You know, there were even a couple of times where COVID kind of crept out of the 14 day quarantine and and they just shut it down. It was pretty amazing. It was stunning actually how the country uh, responded and reacted to, to this pandemic. Because of that, all of a sudden a sporting event broke out, you know, and the whole country was behind it and crowds and you know, you're sitting at a bar having a beer and there's somebody two inches from one elbow to somebody two inches from the other elbow and nobody's got a mask on. It just the craziest little things were different um, and great. I mean, just wonderful. Um, the TV side was was obviously phenomenal. I mean, you've worked with Leon before. Leon was with you guys in the ocean race in the Volvo last time. And 
Uh, he just puts on such a good show and he's such a pro and I, I hate giving Leon any credit whatsoever, but I actually have to publicly do that because I'm going to, I'm going to hear about it for the rest of my life. Uh, Leon Sefton. And um, uh, so it's easy to join his team because I like him and I think we all work together and, you know, work in, in, in the booth with Shirley and Nathan and Stephen MacGyver, who, uh, who is new to sailing, but certainly we just kind of liked each other, you know, and I hope that came out on the air because we all really enjoyed each other's company and we all really appreciated what the other person brought. And then for me, the, the other side of it, of course, is I, I kind of have to be there anyway, because it's three of our biggest clients in the world are, are there, whether it's Southern Spars or Future Fibers or North Sales. Um, I got to be there. I have to You go where your clients are. You know, and originally there was going to be a lot of super yachts there. There were a few super yachts and, and again, our clients. So I got to I have to be there and, you know, when, when in doubt, shake hands, kiss babies and, and make everybody feel like they're loved by our company. And then working in, in the Southern Hemisphere was terrific, too. You know, daily, easy conversations with Australia, easy conversations with New Zealand without um, without that time zone uh, crunch. It was long hours, you know, long hours of, of mixing the north side and, and the southern side and the future side with the America's Cup side. But we pulled it off. I'm still probably a little tired, <laughs> still a little baggy. Um, but, uh, uh, it, it, well, you know, the, the TV, TV today is as good as it's ever been in our sport. And it's an honor to be part of it and to show our sport off in a way. People, you don't have to love the boats. You don't have to even love the event. But you got to appreciate it. it's being shown like it's never been shown before. And that's good. That 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 leads to growth. And then you mix in the fact that half the world was locked in their basements and had nothing else to do anyway. So let's let's watch the the America's Cup. And, you know, it was kind of a the ball started rolling downhill. And I, I think it was pretty nice. I, I, at the end of the day, it was an honor to be part of it, as always. And um, what a show. Let's talk some of the technicals that were on display because I'm sure you had an eye even more finely tuned than the rest of us. Um, obviously, foils have been a big thing that's been discussed. And I know that um, one of the things is always talked about with the America's Cup in the same way the Formula One, what will be designed that will then trickle down into everyday, you know, consumer use. Um, the so with the mainsails, with the two skins on the mainsails, obviously you are known for sails. Was there anything there that you thought, hmm, you know, there's been some interesting things there and as a company you're sort of thinking about for the future? Uh, listen, I, I think the teams that uh, I think the teams that took on the engine above the deck as much as they took on the engine below the deck, so the foils above the deck as well as the foils below the, below the deck, Teams that took on the, the stuff up top as hard as they took on the stuff under the water prospered. And they prospered in many different ways. The, do I think that twin skin mainsails are going to become the, all the rage? Not really. But it's all the stuff that you can't see right now that will become all the rage. Um, the way our sails are engineered and built changed, uh, our software certainly improved when 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 you have when you have three you know we had th our stuff on three teams and when you have three teams spending a couple hundred million bucks a piece to try to get faster and, and all of a sudden our software and our best people are in the thick of it um you can't help but get better it, it's it's only good for us and what's good for us we hope is good for our clients because we're constantly trying to make better product and better sales and we have a you know this patented technology, this 3DI stuff, this that that uh, we didn't think, you know, we didn't think it could get a whole heap better again, and it it did. Let's talk about um, a piece of technology then in the ocean race that you are bringing, namely sails, um, and this has been the the A4 downwind sail, and there's so much that I want to talk to you about on this. Let me start off with the fact that um, with the 65s the last time around, the A3, pretty much all the teams just went, we leave it in the bag. It doesn't suit, it doesn't fit, and all the rest of it. Did you did you approach this and did you go, right, 
I mean, one option would just be, we'll get rid of it. You just get rid of the A3. They didn't use it. They went around the world fine. I mean, we broke the 24-hour record. You know, the boats were really quick. Um, did you, you know, why introduce the A4? What, what are you trying to do? Does it give the teams a tactical option that they didn't have before? Yeah, yes and yes. So it's really back to the past. You know, it's uh, the A4 is nothing new, but it's new on these boats. And I think what, what worked out at the end of the day were the A3s and the masthead Genoas or the masthead Code Zeros, however you want to call it, were kind of similar in performance, yet there was a little more speed out of the masthead zero. So not quite the depth on the A3 to make that tactical difference. Um, so they were just a little too similar. And People just wanted to keep the hammer down and tactically it opened up options, right, with that big Genoa. So um, Bauer Becking actually pushed for this really hard. He uh, he did the transatlantic race down to the Virgin Islands last year uh, from from the Canaries on a, on a 65. And he wanted to try a A4. And we said, OK, we'll design you one. And, see, and he came back and sure enough, from a flat out VMG downwind, it was a huge improvement. Um, and and it's a cheap sale in, in in retrospect you know in the big picture it's cheap compared to an a3 so if we could if we could trade if we could separate the difference between that masthead genoa and a actual downwind sale open up options make tactical options i like it because frankly i i don't love the fact that in one design all these boats are all just in a little pack all the time just kind of following each other like little kids in a in a soccer game you know and just follow the ball follow the ball follow the ball if there's tactical options that all of a sudden you can plug into your computer and your one one boat's taking you 150 miles to the left and the other boats the other computer's taking you 150 miles to the right using completely different sails that's fun that's what I missed from the Volvo 70 days. You know, all we all had our horse for our course and and that separation and what's going to happen in a day and a half's time when they all come back together again. I, I miss that. I think that's a real intrigue in downwind sailing and or in, in offshore racing. And and Bauer was the pusher of it. And we just delivered version two to him the other day. And I actually got a really nice note from Bauer. So um, saying that this is a this is a keeper. So. So they came back with great data and really helped us kind of design, massage that sail. And um, I think we got a better option, makes the boats more versatile and probably more fun to sail to. So for those of us that are going to be following the racing in the Ocean Race Europe, obviously the courses aren't going to be the massive legs that you could really you know, go anywhere, really. Um, but with the A4, once we get onto one of those legs where the A4 is going to be the sailor choice, um, what might we see then? We, you know, the option to go 20 degrees lower, 20 degrees higher? No, uh, not, not something <clears throat> that dramatic, but certainly um, lower with pace. And I think the A4 comes into much more in play in the ocean race Europe than maybe it does uh, in, the, in the big o ocean race because there's more jiving down beaches, um, m much more... I have to get from you to me, and we got to get there as quick and efficiently as possible because we don't have two days to wait for that next cold front that's coming from the right. So we, there's no more hauling ass way offshore to get out to that next big shift and go. We got to play a bunch of little shifts, and that's going to lend itself much more to this A4. And I think I'm quite sure uh, uh, there's seven teams signed up, and seven teams have bought the A4. Plus, they want to start testing. They want to start playing with it. They want to figure out how to get it up and down. Um, they want to figure out what the top end is. Remember, another intriguing part here, Dial, is they only have one. And we've all sailed with spinnakers, you know, with nylon or polyester, and you can break them. So when do you take it down? You know, it, it, where is the top end? And that's going to be a tactical decision, too. You know, you you push this thing and blow it up, all of a sudden, you have that little tactical uh, bullet in the in the chamber that's gone. Maybe for the rest of the leg, we might see sewing machines back on board again to put these things back together again. So anyway, I, I think it brings a little bit of the old school stuff that we did um, back into account. Maybe I'm just nostalgic for, for some of the old fashioned ways, but uh, I, I think it'll be fun. And again, I, I credit Bauer. Um, he, he was a real pusher for this, and, and uh, a lot of people were kind of shaking their head and I think everybody kind of thinks he was right now. It's a good, good move. Interesting that it was sailor 
led. I, I, I wouldn't have thought that the... I mean, it makes sense now that you mention it, that that, of course, is where the impetus sort of comes from. Um, presumably, uh, someone like Bauer comes up with the idea or says, look, I, I think there's a little bit of a gap here and I think it would work well. Getting it first or at least getting into the conversation first, there's a bit of an advantage there because you've just had longer with this new toy. Um, what do you hand over? Uh, I, you know, I'm used to like J70, here's your North Sales, here's your tuning guide. A lot of these sales are un, very much untested. So what would a team, you know, what what are we going to expect a new team in the 65s in the Ocean Race Europe? They get given the A4, a full set of instructions? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure we even know right now. I, I think this is going to be just kind of like it was sailor push. It's going to be sailor driven and sailor learned. You know, it go offshore and, and go sailing. Uh, I mean, we used to test. Boy, the second time around, you know, where you had to, you had to make a choice between a big deep A3 and a, and a nylon sail. We used to go offshore for hours and days on end trying to find a crossover, which was better where, which are you going to bring? Are you even going to measure? We, we ended up not even measuring in a, a polyester sail on the Volvo 70s way back when. But that was after days and days and days and days of testing. So there's nothing with something like this. Waves come into account. You know, it's still quite hard for, for these computer software to deal with waves. Um, they're just going to have to go build their own polars and, and, and go out and good old fashioned, you know, get your instruments right and, and trust them, I think. Uh, maybe somebody comes up with a little bit better plan, but I, I think this is just going to be good old fashioned. Go figure it out, fellas. And, and by the way, everything is sailor driven. You know, we, we, I would love to think that. You know, we get up in the morning and we turn on our computer and our computer gives us some great, some great idea. All, all the ideas are people driven. So, so th this is not a shock. We, we like selling the right sale. We like selling the right sales to the right boats. And you, you essentially have to shake down and interview who you're selling it to, to make sure they're getting what they want and that you, that you understand what they want. And in this case, it, it worked perfectly. And what about the Imokas? Because obviously that's going to be the other half, shall we say, of the Ocean Race Europe. A, a little bit of something for everybody. I mean, the 65s, one design. Yes, we've got this A4, which is a really exciting, I mean, to use your phrase, an unknown, exactly how much the sailors are going to get out of it and where and when. It's going to be really interesting. Then we've got the Imoka 60s. We've got the foils. Um, we are so used to seeing those wonderful promo shots of the Amokas in flat water flying along on their foils. Not quite that way when you get down into the Southern Ocean, obviously, but I think for the Ocean Race Europe, we might be able to see a little bit more of that. Have you been watching that fleet? Have you been in, sort of involved with that fleet? Yeah, yeah, four, five, six of them are, are talking about coming this for this event. There's actually, you know, I, no, I think this Europe event, I was I was pretty skeptical of it um, uh, early on, the, the Ocean Race Europe, but I think it has uh, both in the 65 and the 60s, it's really raised awareness and it's got people off the couch. Like, let's go. Come on. We got to get going. Let's we got to get our sponsors. We, there's no more screwing around. We're going sailing. We're going racing here. Um, so I, I'm really I'm involved in the 65 class uh, on their biweekly uh, on their biweekly kind of class calls. And I kind of stand off to the side and. I guess if they ever need some adult supervision, maybe I'm, I'm there to, to help. But they haven't so far. They, they, it's really getting quite sorted. The teams are getting sorted. You just hear the, you hear the tone in everybody's voice. We get to go racing again. The enthusiasm is really starting to build. And it's not until you get down to crunch time that, that you'll ever see that enthusiasm. And it's, all of a sudden, it's getting to be crunch time. Same with the 60s. You know, there, there was a lot of talk of are there going to be enough boats that are really interested in doing it from the French group to the, and I, I think this allows an opportunity for the French group, the, those single-handed around the world uh, boats, to jump into this with some crews. And, and I have a sneaking suspicion they're going to have a blast. They're going to love it. You know, there's new rules, of course, in the Amokas with the, and the big one is the foil size. Um, when that actually comes into play, I doubt it comes into play for this, for this summer, but, uh, you know, it, having a development class and having a one design class just feels right to me. And, and there's no question 
that uh, that th- there is some real th- this ocean race Europe has brought in more enthusiasm. Kind of a, it's got the ball rolling again. It's got this race back in everybody's radar again. And with such a successful Vendée, such a successful America's Cup, the Olympics look like they're going to happen. We hope they happen really well. Um, this is the this is the other big one, man. We got to get this race back out there again, and this is a great first step this summer. And presumably for yourself, for North Sales, I mean, for all sailors, but the data from the Ocean Race Europe with the A4, I mean, you've actually got a real world opportunity to test things before, you know, the big event, if you like. No question. And, and again, it's a lot of it is, you know, the teams are talking about how they're going to get them up and get them down. You know, it's blowing all of a sudden a squall comes through. It's blowing 30. You're going to put a sock on it. You're going to have a takedown system. You're going to just just the old trip the tack and, and letter box it down underneath the mainsail. Um, simple things like that that, have, you know, are the hatches big enough to get this thing up and down? Um, there's a lot of little logistical details that, as we know, can make a huge difference at the end of the day. You know, you tear that thing at the wrong time and then all of a sudden the squall passes through and you need to get it back up again and you don't have a sail to go back up. You know, you're, you're in trouble. So it's these little details that the teams will be constantly working out and trying to figure out, trying to get the jump on, on their buddy. And, and, uh, and that's fun. That's, I think the sailors are really excited, too. I think they just want to get out there and get going. And, and it's, uh, it's fascinating to watch some of them. There's some good training going on. I know that for sure. Um, and, it, it, you know, this is going to be good fun this summer. I, it's fascinating to hear you talk about it in that way with the the puzzles, the problems yet to be solved. And I can hear in your voice that you're, you know, maybe subconsciously, but you're figuring it out as well, as we all do when we go sailing. Is it better to put my foot here? Should I pull the kite first? Should I do this? And that's, that's the joy of the game. Um, do you, I mean, surely you could come up with some excuse as to why oh, I, I just need to do... This leg, oh, you know, I, I, it's good for the sales, and I just, I'm sorry, I'm just, gonna, I'm not going to get in the way. Do you ever get tempted? I know the logistics with the pandemic and everything, but I wonder, do you just think, oh, you know, could I just flash the badge and just jump on board? Of course, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Charlie Enright's from around here, so I check in with him from time to time, and uh, waiting for him to take me for a spin. I, I actually was talking to Boris Herman this morning and uh, about a variety of different things, and. And uh, and I keep telling him when he when he gets his new boat going, I, he's taking me for a spin. Um, I jump on a 65 in a heartbeat. I, I, I uh, you know, I there's plenty of sailing to do right now. I'm going to do some double handed sailing again this summer. I got a bunch of events to do around here. The big thing is, are we going to be able to get into Europe from 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 this country and vice versa? So uh, so, yeah, I, listen, I. I don't think I ever say no to anything. I just did a Volvo 70 lay. I just did a race uh, from L.A. to Cabo with uh, Roy Disney and the Pie Wacket program. And wow, Brad, my old buddy Brad Jackson, he and I jumped on with the with the Pie Wacket team, and we shattered the record going down to Cabo and uh, and sailing Volvo 70 again. So that was that was good, clean fun. Um, uh, we had a blast. Really good fun, actually, and great team. Was that like putting on an old pair of jeans? Did it just 100%. feel? Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even though it's all turboed up, it was the Telefonica boat that uh, that uh, then became Blackjack. And when it became Blackjack, they got a three meter bigger rig, um, longer keel, lighter bulb, longer spread. Talk about and big tanks in the back end. Talk about turboed up, and uh, it was just as you wet. wouldn't have thought the seventeen needed much more. Really, I mean. Uh, it Exactly. It was just as wet and miserable as I remember. But man, oh man, was it fun. <laughs> it was good, clean fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, listen, um, thank you very much, Ken. I know you're very busy, so I will let you get back to being at home, chilling out or working or whatever it is that you've got in your diary today. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for giving us uh, giving us an update. Always a pleasure, Niall. And, uh, and look out for this uh, Ocean Race Europe this summer. It's going to, for everybody listening, uh, it's going to be fun to watch, and I think the teams are going to have a ball. It's just going to, you know, get back on the horse again. Good stuff. 
A big thanks to Ken Reid for taking the time to talk us through the last year for North Sales and, of course, what our sport has been up to, but as well as giving us his rundown for the Ocean Race Europe and how those teams are looking. It's going to be a bit of a treat to see the VO65s and the Amoka 60s on the same patch of water at the same time. So we hope that you enjoy the event and uh, subscribe to our channel for more updates as to our next interview. And in the meantime, enjoy your sailing.